This is Winning Cures Everything. All right, first thing up, now let's jump into host, the blurbs Gary today. There's a lot to discuss, not a lot of huge stories, stuff that we could make their own segment, I guess you could say. Uh, but a lot of stuff that, that we just want to kind of touch on. And we'll we'll jump into a lot of other a lot of other things later. Uh, first up, you know we're big uh, we're big Brett Bielema fans. Correct. He was named the consultant to the head coach for the New England Patriots. Now, explain to me, Chris, what does that mean? I think I think this is a probably a really high quality internship. Is this like a Butch Jones at Alabama no, kind of thing? No, no, no. Those are <laughs> one guy is getting coffee. The other guy is learning how to coach in the NFL. So basically what you were talking about is is Bielema could end up taking the OC position whenever Well, you know what he could also do? So this is one thing that because I'm an insane Patriots fan and and I follow this team closely, they have and this is this is an undeniable fact. They have the greatest offensive line coach in the history of football. And he's he retired at one point in time. Bill called him a couple of years back to come back. He came back. Uh, he'll never leave New England. He wouldn't coach for another team. He's from there. He lives up there. But he is an older guy. Brett is a former offensive lineman. Brett used to run the the offenses from the offensive line at Wisconsin. I could easily see maybe not an OC job, but Brett sticking around, learning the Patriot way, and eventually working his way into that offensive line position in New England. Okay, so either OC or offensive line. Either way, he is going to have a, a spot OC, eventually. OC would be dependent upon how well him and Josh McDaniels mesh because he, he wouldn't get the OC job unless Josh moved into the head coaching job and Bill retired. Yeah. Yeah, That's there's a lot of ifs there. Yeah. Uh, there's look. There's some crazy stuff that has been going on in New England this off season. So, but I definitely, I definitely never think never. this is this is him learning a the NFL way, the Patriot way of doing things. And I mean, he's made it clear. Hey, I don't have to recruit. I don't have to kiss eighteen year old kids' butts. And <laughs> and I get to go to work, and I get to worry about my players doing football all day. Yeah, I don't care if they're making it to their chemistry class or if they're able to pass algebra two, like it doesn't matter. Yeah. You just care about football. It's kind of, it's a lot different. It's a lot different. Uh, next up, Nick Saban went on ESPN and at media days, he told everybody that he didn't know if Jalen Hurts was going to be here next year. Well, then he came on ESPN a few days later and said that Hurts told him that I am going to be here. I came here to get an education and to get my degree. Hertz will uh, graduate in December. Does this change anything at all about the current situation? No, no, it doesn't change anything. And here's the reason why. We know he's going to be there this year because if he was going to transfer, he would have had to already transfer. Teams are already in the camp. Yeah. So there's no question. Well, he would have had to sit out this year anyway. But if so, he waits until he graduates, then he which doesn't will have to sit in out December, at all. Then next year he can go wherever he wants to go. So yeah. this changes nothing. Yeah, I agree with you. I agree. I think it's really smart of Jalen to graduate as early as possible so he can play an extra year of football because we both kind of agree unless he changes position, this guy is not Lamar Jackson. This guy is not Deshaun Watson. He's not going to play quarterback in the NFL, yeah. so he needs to play as much as he can because it could be the last time he plays. Yeah, I agree. So don't sit out a season, get those plays in, graduate, do the right thing, and I'm for that. But there's yeah. no doubt he was going to play this year. That's he, Well, he here's the thing. He can't transfer today. We're too close to the season start. Well, he wouldn't transfer today and be able to play anyway. Yes. The reason I bring it up, like Blake Barnett transferred from Alabama after like four games back in 2016. Yeah, but they're not the same guy. One but, guy but, took a team to two national championships. I'm with you. I'm the with other you. guy's name is Blake Barnett. But what I'm saying is nobody wants Barnett, that. like Hertz is the one that, that beat out Barnett. He was ranked lower as an incoming recruit or whatever. But Barnett left after four games in the middle of a season – and that season counted as his redshirt season, like his uh, his, transfer his, his transfer season. season. Yeah. So Hertz could it, it could counted, feasibly it, leave by like 
really the first couple of weeks in September, and this would be his transfer year. We are having a completely different conversation, though, because Hertz is three months away, four months away from graduating. That, Agreed. Blake Barnett wasn't close to graduating. Well, on he, top of that, he'd have been on campus for for five minutes. If Hertz loses the job, do you think that Saban would keep him? Like it, he would only allow him to play in like four games. Like, because you know, Mac Jones is going to be your backup. Would you only let him play in like three or four games so that he can use a red shirt, so that when he is a graduate transfer next year, he would have two seasons? Oh, by not playing him a lot. Yeah, playing less than four games. Um, a, I don't think. Or would this I, be something where Saban plays him like in five games anyway? Just so to, that if he goes to Auburn or Tennessee it, it or wherever, not, it would not shock me for Nick. I'm, I think Nick is going to do what's best for his football team. I agree with that. So that I, that, I don't think he's going to a do Jalen any favors, but I also don't think he's going to actively hurt him if if Tua goes down. And and he needs a quality quarterback to come in in a tight game, and yeah, it's going to blow gonna, his. He's going to yeah. blow his red shirt. He's going to do what it takes to win that game. Yeah, I agree. Because it, and I'll tell you this: as much as I hate on Alabama, as much as, that's the right thing to do because you have to take care of the. T- you're the head coach. Yeah, you take have to care look out team. for the team. You can't look out for one. Now you want to do what's best for as many individuals as possible. Yeah, but you have to put the team first. I agree. Next up, Arizona quarterback Khalil Tate's tweet may spark a revolutionary change in the NCAA. This was a Bleacher Report article from last week. The deal was, when Arizona was looking for a new head coach, Ken Neomatalola, hopefully I said that right. Navy coach. Navy's head coach. For everybody who doesn't know that name. Was the hot name. Runs the triple option at Navy. Like, that's what he does, etc. Khalil Tate, you would think, would be really good in that offense, you would you would think, just based off his rushing ability from last season. He right? would be. And so, here's the deal, though. Khalil Tate jumped on Twitter, and he, he put out a single tweet. Now, this is how he explained it. He said, when I tweet, it is something important. He said, I download the app, I tweet it, I delete the app. He said, and then I don't ever look at anything else. I just I tweet what's important. That is a, that is a wise young man. Yes, What he tweeted was, I didn't come to Arizona to run the triple option. The president and the AD saw it, immediately contacted Kevin Sumlin, dropped Ken Neomatalola off of their list, and the AD basically came out afterwards and said, yeah, like the, and the president came out and said, look, we want our student athletes to be involved in these hiring processes. We want them to be uh, to approve of who they're going to be playing under. I totally get that aspect of it. My question to you is, should big-time universities be focused on the current student-athletes, or should they be focused on what is best for their university? Like, I don't know that, that Ken Neomatalola was better than Kevin Sumlin. Okay, that's but, a different question. Yeah. yeah, different question altogether. But if they thought he was, would this one player have the the power, even though he's only going to be there a couple more years, to to completely submarine a hire? So, Should they? So I'm gonna I'm gonna answer I'm gonna answer both questions, even though we're not really asking the first one. First, I, I like <laughs> Ken Nian Niam Nola Pat Ken Nia. Yeah, you got you got that. <laughs> I've totally butchered that guy's name. My apologies greatly. Um and, and, and I, I like him a lot. I love watching Navy play. I you know I oh, bet God. we bet on them a lot. Yeah, no, and, we do. And, and he's we're, a spread we're, cover yeah, machine. We're we're definitely big fans of his. Whew. But for major power five football, I I think Kim, Kevin Sumlin is kind of leaps and bounds better. Well, Khalil Tate came out and explained the reason why is that he has more of a chance of getting hurt. Oh well, yeah, but he in wants that play, he wants to play on Sundays. Yeah, he wants to. He, and he, he doesn't can. want to get hurt in in like playing at Arizona. That kid can. And I, he I think he can. It, and I, and I he's got to he's got to yeah. figure out how to throw the ball well, a little we, more. We can handle that. But Kevin Sumlin, you be taught ought to be able to do that. You be taught that. You would think so anyway. Yeah. <laughs> um. So 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 that answers question one. Here's the thing. Question two: As should big time programs be doing this? We got to define big time programs. Power but, five programs. What, okay, but there's a Our difference. Friend, you know, screw that. No. Any program. Any program. Uh, that's what I'm going to say. Any college football program. Should yes. they listen to the current student they, athletes? They absolutely should because the current student athlete 
the quarterback playing today is not a whole lot different than the quarterback that's going to be playing there in four years. And what you want to, to know is that what is the, the young generation right now? You and I have become old guys. What does the <laughs> young generation right now want more than anything else? They want their voice to be heard. Oh, that's – yeah, you are that, so right about that, that. That is that is not arguable. Very, very that's nice. what they want. And so, simply, this AD and this president has – so now, Arizona is not playing with USC and Oregon and Washington on the same level of recruiting. They're Agreed. just they're just not. Now, hey, I, I, might, I might go look there. You know what? I don't know that I like what's going on here, and I'm not a fan of this quarterback or coach, and, and Oregon's changing coaches every couple of years. I, you know, maybe Arizona's not so bad. And and, and at Arizona, guys, I know that they'll listen they, to me. They're at least going to listen. They might not do everything you say, but they're going to listen. I like and it. And you know what? I'm totally okay with it. Now, if you're a not Power 5, you're a big boy conference uh, team playing for national championships every year, your Clemson's, your Florida State's, your Ohio State's, your Michigan's, you know, your Alabama's, your your legit big boys, you, Oklahoma, USC's, the Blue Bloods. Yeah. No. They have to look out for the greater good of the entire university and the and the legacy that those teams are carrying on. I don't think Notre Dame can do this. I don't think I those teams that I named can do this, but but could Memphis do this? Oh, oh yeah. Absolutely. Could, could could smaller schools do it? Yeah, but even if you've could, got a guy that that is could a Missouri Heisman do this? contender, absolutely, Missouri could yeah. do this. Their power. Well, five Missouri SEC already did it. But yeah, but you see what I'm saying? Like, yeah. Like, I actually think that matters because the kids about to be recruited. That's a big deal. That makes sense. That makes sense. All right, we got uh we got a couple more. Uh, Danny Green just traded from the Spurs to the Raptors. Came out on his pod or on a podcast uh, last week. And said that he played with a groin tear that was undetected by Spurs medical staff. Does this give any credence to why Kawhi was uh, hesitant to come back for the Spurs? I'm not going to get too much into this. I don't know, and I also don't. It probably does. That'll be the answer. I but find it funny that he that he started talking about it after he got traded. Why this did, guy was a he was yeah. toting the company line like. Yeah, he, he, he would have never he, said a word. He waited until he left. I kind of respect that. Yeah, but but also, I agree. Here's my deal. I don't now. I'm not not a doctor. Played one when I was little. But <laughs> it, how on earth is a trainer supposed to know you have a tear unless you tell him I have a problem in my groin? See, now I don't know the full I, story, so but I don't, I, I don't but know. From that. what I understand. He had told them. He reported, "I'm having, yeah. I'm he having." He told them, "I'm having problems. problems," and they looked at, oh, it's, it'll be fine." Yeah, and then he played anyway. Okay, because he didn't want to upset the team. That's like, right. I, and I get that, but either way, that, I thought it was very interesting that one, he waited till he left, and two, that's two different instances that people have had problems with yeah, the there, Spurs medical there staff. There could be a little smoke, and Danny Green's never been like the diva guy that that. Uh, yeah, he he ain't been complaining. No, I mean we we never. I was about to say that Kawhi's been, but that's a shot at Kawhi, and I shouldn't do that because Kawhi's pretty quiet and to himself. Yeah, and really, he never came out publicly and said like his people, I guess, did or whoever. But like he never said, you know, that anything was was majorly wrong. He just he just wanted to get out of there. All right, last up on the blurbs, there was a man that was exercising naked at Planet Fitness. He thought it was a quote judgment free zone and it should be that's what i was gonna ask should this man have been allowed to exercise naked in a membership place swing like, that thing man <laughs> swing that thing get some power cleans in absolutely absolutely all right I got, I got no beef with it i've never been afraid of a dangling nah me either me either where where did this take place let me let me find the location on this and see gonna, what we're dealing I, with now now over under on wagering is it Florida? The guy's name is Eric Stagno. He's 34. Happened in Place Style, New Hampshire. Oh, God almighty, we got advertisements abort, everywhere. Abort, abort. Either way, we got, we got the fighting to Either way, New Hampshire. One. <laughs> fighting to remain number one. <laughs> Thanks, Fox News. We appreciate y'all. Good gracious. All right, let's move off of that. It's time for our SEC West preview. 